The series continues with Clyden, waking up his mate Bordas to discuss their son, who they named Topa. However, Bordas grumbles about waking him early and does not wish to talk about the matter. He is still bothered by the fact that Clyden got their child to undergo a sex change procedure. Bordas then gets out of bed and leaves for work to start his shift early. Upset, Clyden mediates his pain with ice cream and watches his favorite show on TV. Meanwhile, Mercer and the crew are mapping local stars when they detect a space vessel larger than anything they have encountered yet. Isaac discovers that the ship is 2,000 years old, drifting through space, and it is set to collide with a nearby star in six months. Worried, Mercer wants him to communicate with the inhabitants of the ship, but it turns out that the engines of the ship have been damaged so they cannot get any signals. Hence, Mercer forms an exploratory team including himself, Kelly, Alara, Dr. Claire, and Isaac to inform the inhabitants about the situation in person. He orders Bordas as the acting captain of the Orville before he and the team enter the ship via a shuttle. Upon arrival, the team passes through the exterior of the ship, only to enter a vast ecosystem. They realize that the vessel is a bioship, mostly hollow, and designed to house an ecosystem several tens of thousands of kilometers wide with many millions of lifeforms on it. They break into two groups, one consisting of Mercer, Dr. Claire, and Isaac, the other, Kelly and Alara. Soon Mercer's team finds a small cabin. Isaac scans the perimeter, and reports that there are three occupants inside the cabin. Mercer approaches it and knocks on the door, only to get slammed by a woman. He once again knocks at the door, but this time, a man answers it with a shotgun in his hand. The man then attempts to shoot the team, but luckily, Isaac knocks him out with his gun. Following this, the team ventures inside and attempts to interview two other occupants, but they are frightened and confused. It turns out that the inhabitants of the bioship are completely unaware that they live in a spacecraft. One of the occupants of the cabin, a boy named Tomlin, asks the group if they are from the beyond. Mercer says yes, and Tomlin tells them to follow him. Elsewhere, as Kelly and Alara walk through a meadow, a vehicle suddenly approaches them with two armed men on it. Before the two can try to explain themselves about the situation, the men shoot Alara and knock Kelly out and take her, leaving Alara to die in the field. In the next scene, Mercer's group follows Tomlin to the hideout of the Reformers, a group of rebels who believe that their world is larger than a simple ecosystem. They believe there is far more beyond their homeland. Back on the Orville, Bordas receives a priority distress message from a fellowship, the Asdruian. The Druian is under attack from enemy Krill, so Bordas is forced to resort to help and temporarily abandon Mercer and his exploratory team. Bordas, however, orders one of his crew members to leave behind a communication pod, so that the exploratory team can connect with them via the pod. Next, the reformers offer meals to Mercer's team and explain that their ecosystem is overseen through a dictatorial theocracy. Their political leaders violently enforce belief in a supreme deity named Doral. Their conversation is interrupted by a badly wounded Alara, who has managed to send a message to Mercer about her situation and transmit her coordinates. On the other hand, Kelly is taken into a government building for questioning. Outside, she witnesses a captured reformer beaten to death by an angry mob. Inside the building, Hainlack, the leader of the ship, believes Kelly is a reformer as well and tortures her. He demands to know where her other friends are, but Kelly refuses to tell him. In the following scene, Mercer's group finds Alara, and Dr. Claire heals her wounds with her scientific objects. Alara is finally back to her normal form and informs about Kelly being taken by two armed men. Hearing this, Tomalin guesses that it's Hamlack's men, and takes them to the government building where Kelly has been kept. Before starting the mission, the Orville team dresses in common, native attire to infiltrate the government building and rescue Kelly. In the meantime, Bordas and his team successfully destroy the attacking Krill, rescue the Druyan, and begin its return to the bio ship. Inside the government building, Kelly tries to explain to Hamlack that he is part of a bio ship that will soon be destroyed by a star, but the latter does not believe her nor understands, and continues to torture her for the location of her friends. Thankfully, Mercer and his rescue team break into the facility and hold Hamlack and his men at bay with their guns. Mercer then knocks out Hamlack and the team leaves the building, saving Kelly. Following this, another reformer, Kemka, takes them to an exit door. The team then goes through the exit door and finds themselves inside the control room of the bio ship. There, Kemka and Tomlin observe outer space for the first time. Meanwhile, Isaac finds and plays a recording left 2,000 years ago by the final ship captain, Jehavis Doral. 
In the clip, Doral explains that their vessel is part of a planet's goal to colonize another world. Unfortunately, the ship was hit by an ion storm and stranded in space. It had significant damage to its engine but the ship's ecosystem was self-sustaining, so people could live for thousands of years. Doral had no choice but to hope for someone to discover them. Later, Mercer orders Isaac to open the bioship's roof to display the starry sky, revealing the truth to the inhabitants of vast space. He then arranges a special training crew from the Planetary Union to repair the vessel. In the next scene, the team is back at the Orville. Shortly after, they receive an emergency message from a mining ship caught on a sun diver, a comet trapped in the gravitational pull of a star. From the ship, the miner and captain, Priya Levesque ask for help from the Orville. She says that the heat of the nearby star has damaged her ship beyond recovery. Wasting no time, Mercer, Malloy, and Alara land on the ship by a shuttle. They take Priya aboard and quickly return to the Orville. Priya is given a temporary quarter and invited to join the senior crew staff for cocktails hosted by Mercer later that evening. At cocktail hour, Mercer learns that Priya is from the same hometown as him, Boston, so they connect over similar childhood experiences growing up. After the party, Priya personally thanks Mercer for saving her before kissing him on the cheek. Meanwhile, Kelly is suspicious of Priya and searches the mining consortium data logs for anyone named Priya Levesque. Here suspicion comes out to be true as she doesn't find anyone by that name. Meanwhile, as Mercer is busy showing Priya around their ship's internal engine, Kelly requests to have a private conversation with him. She then tells him that the lack of a personnel file for Priya is suspicious and asks him to search her quarters. However, Mercer dismisses her request, claiming there isn't any foul play. Enraged, Kelly instead approaches Alara for help to investigate Priya's room. The latter reluctantly agrees and the two find a strange metallic box under her bed, which their scanners are unable to penetrate. Just then, Priya enters her room and the pair are forced to end their search early. Later in Mercer's office, he is furious that Kelly and Alara searched their guest's room without a reasonable cause. Even when they mention the metallic box, Mercer isn't convinced that Priya might be trouble. Their conversation is, however, interrupted by an emergency call from Lamar. Once in the control room, Mercer and Kelly learn that their ship is caught in a dark matter storm, which is a rare case. Soon, Priya arrives at the scene and convinces Mercer and Isak to flood the space with neutral action particles, making the dark matter visible. Meanwhile, Malloy is unable to navigate through the astounding amount of destructive dark matter since he has never faced such a situation before. Fortunately, Priya assures them that she has experience navigating through dark matter, so she takes control of the system and successfully pilots the Orville to safety. But the ship has sustained some damage so, Priya gives Mercer the coordinates to a nearby mining outpost capable of repairing the ship. After saving them from near death, Mercer is impressed with Priya and takes her on a date. Later, they get intimate and make love to each other in his quarters. The next day, Mercer and Kelly learn of a metallic box planted inside their computer system, which cannot be removed. Taken aback, Kelly tells the captain that it is the same box she saw in Priya's room. Following this, Mercer, Kelly, and Alara immediately storm Priya's room. She finally tells them the truth that she is actually a time traveler from the 29th century, 400 years in the future. She then presses buttons on the skin of her arm to activate the metallic box and takes control of the ship. Priya explains that the Orville and its crew were supposed to be destroyed in the dark matter storm. But then she traveled back in time to rescue them and sell their ship to private antique collectors from the 29th century, who will bid a high price. Having no other way to stop Priya, Kelly assigns Chief Engineer Steve Newton to break into one of the metallic boxes. Isaac then scans its data stored inside. But the box sends a fatal electrical shock to him before he can report his findings. Later, through Priya's commands, the Orville enters a wormhole to travel to the 29th century. On the other side waits for a foreign ship of extraordinarily advanced technology. However, Priya is surprised by a sudden attack from Kelly and is forcibly restrained. After the danger is averted, Lamar and Malloy immediately pilot back through the wormhole. Meanwhile, Isaac is revealed to be alive, having uploaded his consciousness to the ship's computer just before inspecting the box. Priya, now subdued, pleads in Mercer's office to send the Orville back through the wormhole, as the current timeline will be irreparably damaged. However, Mercer explains that time is always open to change and there are numerous versions of their future. He then orders his crew to destroy the entrance to the wormhole, and Priya vanishes in thin air after the destruction. In the next scene, Mercer and his crew learn that Castor 4, a new planetary union colony, is under heavy attack from a Krill destroyer ship, Kakov. Since there are no other union ships nearby, the Orville is forced to engage the enemy alone. 
but the Krill ship proves far too strong and the Orville rapidly loses its power. Thankfully, after Captain Mercer's quick thinking, the Kakov is immediately destroyed and Castro 4 leaders confirm their colony is battered but survives. Later, in the wreckage of the Kakov ship, a Krill shuttle is discovered. A general, Admiral Azawa pays a personal visit to the Orville to commend Mercer's bold leadership but also to order a new mission. Azawa wants two officers from the Orville to use the recovered shuttle to go undercover aboard a Krill ship to obtain a copy of the Ankana, the Krill Holy Text. She believes that the Ankana guides the highly religious Krill, which could help in making peace with the enemy. Soon enough, Malai and Mercer take the shuttle into Krill space and disguise themselves as Krill soldiers through holographic generators. They approach a Krill ship named Yakar and pretend to be Krill survivors from Kakov. Yakar Captain Harrows and High Priest Sazarin welcome Mercer and Malai on board. The pair are just in time for services the religious practice of the Krill. In a religious hall, they sit beside a school teacher, Telia, who is very interested in them as her brother served on the Kakov, as well. After the religious services, they sneak back into the empty hall and begin copying the pages of the Ankana. Unfortunately, the Sazarin arrives at the scene and asks what they are doing. Mercer quickly invents an excuse, and the two leave. Later, when most of the Krill soldiers are off duty, the pair return to copy the book. Meanwhile, Sazarin requests Captain Harrow's place a guard on their chapel. Elsewhere, in the religious room, Mercer and Maloy's holographic generators fail, and their disguises disappear. After they sneak back into their quarters, they learn that magnetic interference caused the generators to fail. They then fix the generators and they disguise back to Krill soldiers. The pair then decides to investigate the source of the magnetic interference, and find an enormous Krill bomb, ready to be launched. On their way back, Telia finds the two and invites them for dinner. She explains that the bomb is a prototype capable of annihilating an entire colony in seconds. It will be used on the Union-controlled planet of Rana 3. Once back at their guest room, Mercer is determined to undermine the Krill's mission, and they decide to detonate the bomb themselves and destroy the Yakar. Meanwhile, Telia returns to request the pair talk to her trainees about the Battle of Kakov. It turns out that Telia is a teacher of Krill children on the ship. In the next scene, Mercer and Malloy attend the class and soon excuse themselves after learning that there are children on board. Back in their quarters, they agree that destroying the ship and thus killing all children would be evil. Mercer notices that the Krill are extremely susceptible to ultraviolet radiation since they have always lived on a dark planet. With this information, they devise a plan for Malloy to hack into the ship's engineering and cause the ship to emit large amounts of light, enough to kill a Krill but not enough to kill a human. In the meantime, Mercer would gather the children in a classroom and save them from the light. Next, the duo goes on their way as planned Malloy leaves for engineering, successfully hacks into the ship's computers, and sets a timer for the light's emission. When he reports the completion to Mercer, Sazarin catches him with the communication scanner. Sharon then orders a body search and finds Malloy's generator as well, turning him back into his human form. Upon finding out Malloy's true identity, he brings him to Captain Harrows and alerts other soldiers to look for Mercer. Harrows interrogates Malloy, and the latter tries to stop him from launching the bomb at Rana 3 Colony. However, Harrows is adamant and gives his orders to launch the bomb. Meanwhile, the timer for the light's emission expires and a UV blast emits, killing all life on board but Mercer, Malloy, Telia, and the children. Malloy then successfully gains control of the bomb and destroys it before entering Rana 3 Colony. Following this, he and Mercer guide a nearly empty Yakar ship to reunite with the Orville. They also take Telia and the children with them. Later at the Orville, Mercer apologizes to Telia for the necessary deaths of her crew. He informs her that she is to be a prisoner, but the children will be returned to their parents as they aren't his enemies. Telia remarks that after what he did on their ship, the children will be his enemies in the future. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel grow. Don't forget to watch part 3. Thanks for watching.